This is Average Joe PT, where we're here to reduce anxiety, improve function, and what are we supposed to do? Master your pain! Oh, that's right. Master your pain. That's right, Scully. Now, last week, we talked about all the different treatment techniques that you can do at home to reduce that shoulder pain. Now, this week, all our treatment techniques are going to work on improving that shoulder strength after an injury and how to do it safely. Now, if you're new to this channel, Scully and I would love to have you subscribe down below, hit the bell. We bring content once or twice a week. We do live on Wednesdays at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. So, we always like to say, look up and keep smiling. So here we go. what's the first thing we need to do when it comes to getting our shoulder better? We need to work on the motion That's first. That's right. We need to get our motion back before we can work on anything else. Well, I got two things. Stuff you got at home. Broomstick. Dust. This little duster right here. All you do is unscrew mine. Pretty simple. Comes right off. What are we going to do with this? I already told you, we're going to work on the motion. That's right, we're going to work on that motion. So you're going to take something like a dowel or a stick, cane, anything. I'm using, obviously, as you can see, the dust wand. And all I want you to do, whatever side's hurting, the other side's going to do all the support. So you're just going to kind of come up, and then down nice and easy. You're going to come up and down nice and easy. Now you want to do this initially lying down because it's a lot less stress on the shoulder. And then if it's your left shoulder, you want to come out and come in. You want to do these exercises probably 30, 40 times just to start to get that thing to stretch out. You should feel a stretch. You shouldn't have any pain. If you're feeling pain, you need to back off a little bit. So that's exercise number one, just getting that motion back. Coming out to the side and coming back down. And like I said, you want to start those initially lying down. Yeah, lying right. down. See, Scully knows, start with the range of motion exercises. After that, you want to go ahead and, like I have the rubber bands, I'm going to leave a little link down below that you guys can go ahead. And I think they're like two or three bucks on Amazon, they're pretty cheap. Good old cans. If you get one, basically 16 ounces, 12 ounces, get right up to that about a pound. All right, and what you want to do is you can do this in standing or sitting. You're just going to press up and press down nice and easy. Press up and press down nice and easy. You want to do a few sets of 10. You want to come out and then come in. Come out and come in. The most important motion to get back is the rotational motion, whether you're coming out or whether you're going in. Because to raise your arm over your head, you have to have that what we call external rotation. If you don't, Coming in close for a second. This little thing right here where my finger's at, that's where your supraspinatus is at. And if you have that shoulder the way I showed you, it'll get a nice space. If you don't have that space, then what happens is you start to pinch that rotator cuff. And so you need to have that rotation outwards so your arm can clear that space. Otherwise it'll pinch, it'll catch, it'll feel tight. It'll start giving you that achy pain down the side, that rotator cuff telling you like, hey, hey, it hurt, I'm hurting, don't do that. So it's very important that's the first thing you do. Now you can use a dumbbell. I start out really light, one pound or less. You can go to most yard sales, flea markets, or just press straight up like that and down the same exact thing as the can. So depending on what you want to do, if you are got a little of the rubber band action, do the same thing. You're just holding one hand on one side and then you're kind of rotating out and rotating in and then kind of pressing out and then pressing in. So that's the same as what you could do with the cans. 
kind of coming out and coming in, and then coming out and coming in. You can do it with cans, exact same thing. You want to do it till you feel fatigued. You can do this in standing. You can do this lying on your side and rotating up. That's a nice thing. Or you can be lying on your back and rotating out. You want to go to the point where you feel nice fatigue, but no shooting pain. You start to have some pain, you might need to back off down in resistance or you might need to do less reps. So that's food for thought. Go to comfort, don't go to pain. So the next one you can do, now I got a couple different ones. I got tubing here too. And so you can go ahead and kind of rotate out to the side instead of coming straight up. You just kind of rotate out to the side because what do we do mainly in life? We go out to the sides, we wanna grab things. We're not robots, we don't come straight up and down like that. And so once you get comfortable going in these specific directions, these straight directions, or what we call sagittal plane directions, we want to start moving in multiple directions. And so we get a little bit fancier with that. We're going to want to rotate up and out. Or if it's to the left side, you rotate up and out, depending on what shoulder it is. And so you want to start making those movements really complex because that's how we move in life. And we want to simulate the type of movements that we're going to do. If you do a lot of overhead type work, well, you better make sure that your exercises are moving overhead. You maybe want to come into this direction, get that range of motion up and then pulling down or coming up and pulling apart as the band comes up through. You kind of come up over your head and pull the band apart. It really depends on really what type of activity you want to get back to. Now you can do the same thing with the cans. Up and overhead and open up and pull and pull back down. You just want to add some resistance once you get your range of motion back. And once, like I said last week, reducing the shoulder pain for at least two or three weeks before you start doing this stuff. Now my shoulder, knock on wood or something just as hard, is starting to feel pretty good. Ain't that scully? At least you have a shoulder. Oh, okay, yeah, you don't even gotta worry about that kind of pain. Any hello? Get out of my head, there. you crazy oh, man! Yes, he's there. Ha ha ha, right? Quit making fun of me! Alright, I'll stop making fun of you. He gets so sensitive. Now don't get started. Don't go ahead and light yourself on fire again or something else crazy, alright? Just teasing with you. It's ridiculous. And so the resistance exercises, whether it's a band, whether it's a can, or whether it's a dumbbell, all do the same thing there to help at least get your shoulder blade more stable so you can move that hand up and away because your shoulder blade is the foundation for all of your strengthening exercises if you don't have a good solid foundation which is your shoulder blade when it comes to the rest of your arm the rest of your ball and socket and the collarbone won't move correctly you'll start having pain or you'll start having limitations in your motion or you'll start shrugging instead of raising your arm up correctly so you gotta make sure that these exercises I'm showing you, you do them nice and slow and work your way up. I mean, we're talking probably three or four weeks of probably four or five times a week doing these exercises. Another nice one is simply just take the can and just do some little circles, clockwise and counterclockwise. Now you can do that in this position or you could lie down and do the exact same thing and doing the same thing, clockwise and counterclockwise. Or you could take this little stick and just kind of start to shake it a little bit and really get those muscles in the shoulder blade starting to work. You can do that like 30 seconds to a minute as long as you're not getting any pain. Always make sure that your shoulder is back and down and not kind of tilted forward. So, if you guys have any comments down below, go ahead and leave them. I'll try and answer them as fast as I possibly can. But like always, monitor your pain level with all these exercises. And so, if you start to have more pain, go back to my last video that I'm going to link right here in a tag to help reduce some of that shoulder pain again. And you might have to back off, do some of those old treatments that I did last week, and then go ahead and come back into some of these strengthening exercises that I've just shown you, the different directions. Now, you can do something as simple as just a punch out, any direction, and try to do like 15 or 20 of those. That's pretty nice. And like I said before, up and down, and maybe kind of alternate. That way your sore shoulder, well that's a, that's a tongue twister, gets a little bit of a break so you can alternate between one side and the other. That's always nice to do. Like Scully and I always say, look up and keep smiling. Now Scully and I, we'd love to let you guys hit that tag right up there. That's going to take you in to our next video. That's going to go over all types of issues in regards to your neck and your mid-back. 
if you're having some shoulder pain as well as some neck and mid back issues because a lot of times they work as a combination and until next time we want you to look up and keep smiling ain't that right scully keep smiling that's right all right folks we'll see you next time